And I just remember crying every day. I just remember literally crying every day. I would wait for my kids to go to bed and go in the bathroom and cry all night until I just was tired. Because I just was miserable. I was miserable. I didn't see any joy, any bright light in anything. In March of 2020, maybe three weeks after I got to this studio, this is one of the days that I was trying and I asked him to come over, my children's father. And I used to have to beg him to see the kids. He was out living his life and I was literally begging for him to be a father. This particular night, we um, slept together. And uh, he was very drunk. And I remember because the kids wasn't there the kids were actually at his mother's. This night, I don't remember how everything went, but the kids ended up at his mother's. And that's why I asked him to come over to see me. So we slept together and he left like four something in the morning, but I was so out of it in the days I wasn't realizing, I'm like, wait a minute, I have to get my kids. So I take a lift over there and I see him in a van with a young lady and I lost it. And I went to go get my kids from his mother and I'm crying to her about what is he doing? He disappeared, didn't come back for a while. I stayed until he came back. He saw me talking to his mother, grabbed Aria and took off with her. Mind you, he was inebriated. This was so scary and I should have really gotten him locked up and got a restraining order. And this is why I'm going through what I'm going through now because I missed the mark on this. He took Aria and drove with her drunk, did not have her in a car seat. And came back without her. And I'm like, where's Aria? Where's Aria? He would not talk. He was on mute. He would not speak. And I'm yelling at him. I'm cursing at him. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? He would not speak. I don't know if he left on the side of a road. I don't know what he did at this time. His mother gets involved and called his oldest sister. She came over. He has a car. We just had a car for eight days that we were supposed to be sharing. Even though we wasn't together, he was gaslighting me to, oh, let's, we gonna share this car. Da, da, da. It was a push start. I knew he was drunk. I told his sister not to get in the car because she's like, we gotta go find Aria. Where is she? Where is she? She gets in the car with him. I'm like, do not let him drive. So I gave his mother the keys. She goes in the house. If the key's not in the close proximity, you can't pull off. She comes back out in the mix of me trying to convince his sister to get out the car. Gets close enough that he was able to push start that car and took off. A few minutes later, she called his other sister, the younger sister that was left behind, and said she they got into a car accident. Why are they looking for my daughter? She can't feel her legs. We knew where they was. We could, It was in close proximity. We took Bryce to the neighbor's house, ran up the block, and saw his sister laid out. Both of her legs were broken. He's alert. The driver's always never hurt. He's not hurt. He's trying to take whatever illegal shit he had in the vehicle out. And he was arrested. While the cops came, I'm yelling at him. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? A girl I know from the neighborhood is running with Aria. I went and hugged both of them. Like, oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then I thought about it, like, how do you know him? Because I know you from the old neighborhood that I used to live in. 
How, how do you have my daughter? Because they were dating. And he slept with me and then went and then took my daughter to the young lady he was dating. Crashed the vehicle and almost killed his sister. That's when I was done. And I ended up going to Houston with my kids. I didn't get him incarcerated like I should have. I didn't get a restraining order like I should have. I took my kids and I met this gentleman to see if he can help me get on my feet in Houston. And that is why I'm being punished for sure. It wasn't about, it, it was certain, some aspects of what was seen in my phone. It was some aspects about me entertaining other guys and he saw me standing there talking to a guy, but this was the pinch hitter, baby. The nail in the coffin. I took my kids to Houston and I stayed with another guy. Well, didn't you tell me I only had three months? But see, it was tricky because during COVID, they had to cancel all evictions. So technically the landlord couldn't evict me, but she expressed that she didn't want me there a month after I got there. I forgot about that. A month after I got there, she sent her son to say, who are you? I'm not renting this place to you. And I didn't want kids in this space. She didn't want me there. So when I went to Houston, I let my, he was then 18, my 18 year old son stay there. And the landlord was fine with that and she couldn't evict him. So I left Makai at the studio. He couldn't get evicted because of COVID. We didn't know what was going on. This is the first time we have ever experienced this. I went to Houston to try to set up shop and then I will send for Makai later if he wants to come. By this time he's 18, he can make the choice to do what he wants. I had a ball in Houston. Houston was amazing. The guy, the gentleman, um, he was a nice guy, but I wasn't in a place of being in love with him, right? I was trying to figure out my life for my kids. And so, I was already feeling like I needed to get out, go get my own place, get an Airbnb, whatever. Because that was what I originally wanted to do was get an Airbnb. But then I didn't know much about Houston. So I needed somebody to help me. I got kids. I wanted that help. And a lot of times being desperate for that help gets you in a worse predicament. But this guy was a gentleman. He treated me and my kids nicely. He was taking us out, showing me around the city you know, spoiling me, buying me things. I, I'm not even that type of person, but I needed that energy at that time. My children's father started calling me and crying to me about how could I leave? How could I leave? How could you do this? How could, where are you with the kids? Like as if he was gonna come pop up and show up on us. I didn't want that. But he kept calling and FaceTiming and trying to make me feel guilty and bad. And I fell for it. I fell for a narcissist.